Hey guys, this is Vin Redman from Elon Baseball. I'm here today with Figured Out Baseball to take you through what we use um, for our machines. To my right here, you'll see um, the Hack Attack, um, Hack Attack Senior, we call it, and this is the Hack Attack Junior. Um, obviously, this one is bigger. Uh, it's able to throw the ball a little bit firmer and get the breaking balls a little bit tighter. Um, this one, obviously, uh, this one gets up to about a 60 mile an hour fastball, shoots it out 60 miles an hour. Um, and the breaking ball is uh, got a little bit of pump to it, but we use both of these uh, every day with our hitters. Um, I think it's the best tool to get your guys a game like look outside of um, facing pitching. So this prepares our hitters to face what they're going to see um, in the batter's box. All right, so uh, that has settings obviously where you can uh, increase and decrease the velocity. You can throw fastballs, sliders, curveballs. Um, I think there's even knuckleball in there. Um, this one we just use fastballs uh, and curveballs. But we use this for fastball, curveballs, and sliders. Okay? So uh, I think it's important when you're using these to make sure that you're giving your hitters a realistic look. And in order to do that, um, I've created a chart here. Um, you can zoom in on this. This is the perceived velocity everywhere from we faced a pitch that was 68 this past spring to a pitch that was 95. Um, I'll just explain this. This is the distance anywhere from 24 feet to 54 feet. This is how far the machine or release point is set up. Um, and then this last one is what the uh, real velocity is. So we use a radar gun to track that. Um, so if I want our hitters to face 90 miles an hour mm -hmm. and I have this set up to shoot, uh, to come out at 72 miles an hour, then I need to put it at 44 feet in order to get them that 90 mile an hour uh, reaction time look. So the way that we have that um, measured is we, I've, I've marked in our cage, I don't know if you can see it from here, uh, every five feet we have a, a paint mark um, all the way from the back tip of the plate to 55 feet. Um, we never go past 55 because that's where pitchers release the ball from. So 55 is the furthest back we'll look. Uh, we'll give our hitters a look from. Um, There'll be some days where I'll crank this thing up to 95 and, and we'll go from 55 feet and it'll be a challenge today. Like, let's see what you got. This sheet will be attached um, to the video. Um, so you'll be able to access that. Um, the reason I like using the machine, other than it's a game-like look, is because it's really hard. And our hitters uh, have, a, have a strong tendency to fail with this, especially early on. And uh, much like the game of baseball, um, there's a lot of failure. So it teaches them not only how to hit, uh, it forces them um, to learn how to hit velocity, but it also forces them how to handle failure and work through um, adversity. Um, it's important that you encourage your hitters um, that need encouraging and challenge your hitters that need challenging. All right? So you, the guys who are really struggling with this, some hitters need um, some sort of uh, motivation in the forms of a challenge saying like hey you can't hit this thing like what's going on today for other hitters um you'll need to coach through more um the biggest thing with our hitters struggle with this is that they miss under the ball a lot so um just because it has a little bit of rise on it um but other hitters hitters will need a little bit more uh encouragement um and you can also manipulate that by you know lowering the velocity a little bit too without them knowing um just to give them a little bit of confidence um, and doing that, and I do that sometimes. So we use this, again, for the fastball and the slider. So it's important also to set the net up uh, for the safety of your players that it's in between uh, the two legs here. A lot of people will set it up out in front, but then you'll catch some ricochets there. So you just gotta make sure that this is covering as, as much as possible. Um, and also, this has a tendency to come unplugged, so if you wrap it around um, this bar right here, that won't come unplugged at all. Uh, it's important, when you're, when you're doing a machine that you're uh, consistent in the way that you're delivering the ball program wide. So what we do is we come up, down, up, down. All right. As a hitter, um, it's really, really tough when some guys are doing this, other guys are doing this. Some guys are holding it here for a minute, letting it go. Um, I try not, it's hard enough as it is, I try not to mess with them too much in regards to that. So just make sure that whoever's feeding the machine, whether it be a player or a coach, um, you make them consistent, and I think you should do it program-wide in how you're putting them on the machine. We always put it in four feet. We always set the machine up so it's actually thrown from the slot 
uh, either whether it be a right-handed hitter, pitcher, or a left-handed pitcher. Um, so it's not flush with the rubber. It's actually where the b ball would be released from. So it's probably anywhere between 18 and 24 inches off center. So today we're facing a right-handed pitcher. We have it set up off the right. Again, anything we can do to make this as game-like as possible for our hitters. So the other thing that we use this for, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is sliders. Um, so the way that I kind of set up our machine work is I try to make it the easiest stuff uh, as e easy as possible early on and then work into the most challenging part. So after we do velocity, um, we, we train breaking balls, so we'll go sliders in one cage, or fastballs in one cage, sliders in the other cage, um, or alternate based on what day we're doing. Um, so I'll start with just, we're just doing sliders now, trying to barrel the ball up more or less. So we'll do the same thing. As you can see, it's got a pretty good, good shape to it. The next level of complexity is using this rope to alter the height of the breaking ball. Okay, so uh, with our hitters to have success, they need to see uh, the fastball down, because you don't want to play the fastball above your belt, and then you need to see the breaking ball's release point up. So what this does is this prevents them from uh, cheating, more or less. This allows me to alter the height relatively easy um, without them knowing on whether it's going to be a strike or a ball. I have the machine set up so it's throwing a breaking ball that is going to hit the plate or maybe a couple inches behind the plate. That's a two strike or a chase breaking ball. Okay, So I have a piece of tape right under my foot so they can't see. Um, if they start peeking you can always throw a bucket or something in front of your foot so they can't tell. You'd be surprised that guys are trying to find a competitive advantage. All right. Um, so I have the, the machine set up so it's going to throw a breaking ball in the dirt that uh, a pitcher is trying to get a hitter to chase. You're not going to have much success as a, as a hitter if you uh, can't lay off this pitch. So this is what that pitch um, looks like. Again, that one hit right in the middle of the plate. One more. That's a chase breaking ball. Comes out of the hand uh, looking like it's going to be mid-thigh and then takes a dive below the knees. Okay, so if I want one in the zone now, all I'm going to do is just press my foot down and that's going to raise the machine up just so he can get it on video again. So it's, it's level here as I press it, my foot down, it pulls on the rope and raises the machine up and puts the, the breaking ball in the strike zone. Into a, a, a very hittable breaking ball. So this is one way I'll challenge guys, um, especially with two strikes. Um, we'll go into our two strike approach and if they have trouble with, uh, if they've had trouble with chasing the breaking ball, uh, this is my go to for these guys. So now, this is um, these two machines together. Um, I have this one set up on fastball, the little one, and then this one set up on slider. Um, you can easily interchange those two, but this one gives us a better look at a realistic breaking ball. I've moved it up according to the chart and uh, radar both velocities so that they're uh, a realistic uh, differential in between the fastball and the breaking ball. So this is obviously a little bit closer. Um, this is set up right now for 88 mile an hour fastball, and this is set up for 76 mile an hour slider. Now the difference in the, uh, it's about five or six feet, um, makes up for the reaction time difference there. Again, you can reference the chart um, and see exactly what you need to have the velocities at in order to make that happen. We do a couple different things with this. Um, you can get as creative as you want. Typically, like I said, we, we try to work easy to hard, um, and then if, if guys are having success, we'll advance to the next level and make it harder. If they're not having success, we'll stay at that level until they um, do have success. But we're working a progression that's, again, easiest to most difficult. So the first round we may do, um, we may end up doing six, anywhere between four and six rounds off of these um, in a given practice if we decide to use dual hack attack. Um, so the first round might, might be five fastballs, um, which is, this is set up for fastballs. So, here, I have it set up right now, so it's pretty much splitting the plate. Next round, we might do five sliders. Okay, and then the, the third round, if they're having, if they've been able to prove that they can barrel this consistently and barrel this consistently, then we'll mix on them. So we'll go maybe uh, three fastballs and then three sliders. And then the next round, we do fastball and then a slider and then a fastball and then a slider. It helps if you have two uh, players or coaches out here to feed. Um, that's traditionally how we do it. And then the last, uh, the sixth round, or the most challenging round, um, is that we have a fastball and a slider going at the same time, and they have to um, more or less 
read what what the pitch is going to be and whether to swing at it. Or not. Okay, so I'm going to show you a demonstration of how that's set up right now. Uh, I'll talk you through it briefly. So the two coaches are, are two two feeders out here, um, and the front person, the front feeder is the lead man. Okay, he's calling the shots. So there's two feeders. Um, they're going to go up at the same time. They present the ball. Um, prior to them presenting the ball, he turns back and says, "Hey, like I got this one. We're gonna, I'm going to throw a fastball." So they both present. They both come down. I release it. He presents here, and then he just pulls it off the side. He holds it. So he doesn't. Obviously, we're not going to throw two balls to hit at the same time. Um, so coaches or the feeders out here can get creative and, and they're more or less giving the hitter a realistic look. Um, you could also, the last, probably the most complex thing we could do is we could also set this up um, with the rope and make that challenging so some of the breaking balls aren't going to be strikes. Otherwise they know it's going to be a strike every time. This has been Rabbit with Elon Baseball. Thanks for watching our machine drills. Um, don't forget to check out our ramp tee drill as well.